In this video, we are going to build an orchestration pipeline step-by-step. -step. Let's understand how it works and see its capabilities. Imagine a conductor leading musicians. All together, they produce a complex melody during the performance. Figuratively speaking, an orchestration pipeline does just the same. It helps you to create, schedule, monitor, optimize, and manage your workflows. It uses one or more orchestration stages to perform tasks, such as starting a sequence of data collector pipelines and control hub jobs. You can use orchestration pipelines to perform tasks in an orchestrated workflow across the StreamSets platform. A typical orchestration pipeline generates a single record. As each orchestration stage completes its task, it adds information about the task that it performed to the orchestration record. You have at your disposal different types of orchestration stages. Let's take a closer look at them. There are several origins. Cron Scheduler generates a record at scheduled intervals. You may use it to schedule orchestration tasks and Start Jobs Origin starts one or more jobs in parallel when the orchestration pipeline starts. Moreover, the orchestration stages include various processors. For example, Control Hub API processor. It sends a request to a Control Hub REST API when it gets a record and writes the response to a specified output field. You can also use a Start Jobs processor to start one or more control hub jobs or job instances from a job template in parallel upon receiving a record. Lastly, Wait for Jobs Processor waits for control hub jobs to complete. If you want to find more details about the topic, make sure you check the StreamSets documentation. And now it's time to create your orchestration pipeline. Before starting to build the orchestration pipeline, make sure you have the necessary prerequisites. Check that your environment is active. Ensure your deployment is active too. Make certain you have the orchestrator and the JDBC stage libraries activated for your deployment. Go to the deployment edit menu and proceed to the stage libraries list. Confirm that both the JDBC and the orchestrator stage libraries are checked. Next, make certain that the engine you are going to use has the JDBC driver installed. While being on the deployment page, go down and select the engine you're going to use. Proceed to the external libraries and ensure you have the JDBC driver installed. If it's not installed, refer to the lab for the installation link and the instructions. Now we'll need to create three pipelines to run them as jobs. Let's start with the first one. Proceed to creating a pipeline. Give your pipeline a meaningful name, employees. It will be sourced from the employees MySQL table. You can find this table in our Academy Lab environment. Click Next. Select one of the authoring engines you are going to use. Keep the rest of the settings as default and click Next until you find yourself on an empty canvas. Go to the Origin drop-down menu and select a JDBC multi-table consumer. Give it a name, employees. Check the produce events box to generate event records when events occur. Notice the letter E appears. It stands for event. The event framework generates pipeline events in data collector standalone pipelines at specific points in the pipeline lifecycle. Now move over to the JDBC tab and specify the JDBC connection string. We will use the Classic Models database. It's pre-built in our Academy Lab environment. Proceed to the Tables tab. 
Enable the table name list. Define the table name pattern list as employees. Our pipeline will be sourced from this table. Finally, go to the Credentials tab and input your data. You will be able to find the necessary credentials and the instructions in the lab for this video. How can we stop the pipeline automatically when required? We need an executor to trigger this task. Executor stages are the ones to perform tasks in the data collector. Each time an executor receives an event, it performs the specified task. So let's select a pipeline finisher executor from the executor drop-down menu. It will stop our pipeline upon getting the event and bring it to a finished state Click the executor icon and turn the switch Show Advanced Options on. You'll find it right under the Canvas screen on the left. Next, proceed to the General tab. You may give your executor a name and a description. Move over to the Preconditions field and input the following expression. Our executor will stop the pipeline when it obtains the No More Data event. This event will be generated when our origin completes processing all data returned by the queries for the employees table. Finally, proceed to the On Record Error field and select Discard. Thus, the pipeline will discard the error record. The data collector will include such records in error record counts and metrics. Now, select the Trash Destination. Validate the pipeline. Next, check in your pipeline and run it as a job. The pipeline will stop automatically thanks to the pipeline finisher executor. Now it's time to create the second pipeline. The good news is that you don't have to build it from scratch. Just copy the employee's pipeline like so. And go ahead and edit it. Change the pipeline name to Orders. And give it a description. Likewise, change the origin name. Next, change the table setting. Go to the Tables tab and replace the table name with Orders, as this is the MySQL table we are using here. Next, validate the pipeline. Lastly, check in your pipeline and run it as a job. The pipeline will stop automatically. You can build the third pipeline the way you created the second one. Likewise, copy the employee's pipeline. Open it. Replace the pipeline name with customers. And provide a description. Likewise, change the origin name. Now change the table setting. In the table section, replace the table name with customers. According to the table, it will be sourced from. Next, validate the pipeline. Finally, check in your pipeline. Run it as a job. it will stop automatically.
we will need one more prerequisite in order to create the orchestration pipeline, API credentials. Go to the left side navigation menu, proceed to the manage section and select API credentials. We are going to add a new API credential. Click the plus button in the top right corner of the API credential window. Give it a name and click Save and Generate. Your credentials will look similar to these ones. Copy the credential ID and the authentication token and save it in a secure location. And now it's time to build one pipeline to manage all the jobs we have created. Proceed to creating a new pipeline. Let's call it Orchestration. Provide it with a description. Click Next. Keep the rest of the settings as default. And click Next until you find yourself on an empty canvas. Now select a cron scheduler from the Origin drop-down menu. Give it a name. Each minute start and provide it with a brief description. Take a look at the cron section. This expression means that the origin will run the pipeline starting from the second zero, every minute beginning from minute zero, every hour beginning from hour one, and on any day, week, month, and year. The asterisk symbols mean that all the values within a field are selected. All in all, the pipeline will be started every minute. We don't have to change the settings here, so we will keep this value as default. Next, select the first start jobs processor from the drop-down menu. Let's call it employee start. Move over to the job tab. Define the task name as start jobs. Specify the Control Hub URL. Paste the Data Ops Platform web page address. We are going to use the job ID as the identifier type. You need to paste your employee's job ID here. Go to the left side navigation menu and proceed to the job instances. Click the job for employees. Scroll down a bit and select show additional info. Copy the job ID. It should look similar to this one. Paste the job ID into the identifier field. Finally, go to the credentials tab and input the credential ID and the token you have previously generated. Now add the second start jobs processor. Copy-paste the employee's start processor. Change its name to Order Start. Click the processor icon and turn the Advanced Options switch on. Next, move over to the General tab. Scroll down a bit and specify the following precondition. Thus, the processor will operate in case the start jobs task is a success. Next, we need to replace the job identifier with the order's job ID. Retrieve it the same way as before. Now let's select the stream selector from the processor drop-down menu.
call it orders and customers start. Then go to the Conditions tab and define the following expression. Replace this ID with the current order's job ID. Thus, once the order's task is about to be completed, the processor will start the next stage. Now we need to add the third start jobs processor. Once again, copy paste the employee's start stage. Replace its name with customer's start and replace the identifier with the customer's job ID. You can retrieve it the same way as before. Finally, add the two trash destinations. Connect them to each of the input slots. Validate the pipeline. Finally, start the orchestration pipeline. You can go to the job section and monitor the orchestration pipeline performance there. Now you can see that the orchestration pipeline is activating and deactivating the jobs one by one on its own without your interference. Here is the final pipeline that starts and stops the jobs sequentially the way we programmed it. Build an orchestration pipeline using our instructions, run the jobs with it, and see the results for yourself. Thanks for watching, and we will see you in the next video.